Hello and welcome to GPTV on the most magnificent day, Gary. It's the 1st of September and you know what that means? It means that the bees and the birds are out. It's the first day of spring and spring is one of the most beautiful seasons in Melbourne. Uh, so welcome to GPTV. My name's Philip Kingston. I'm Gary Peel. Welcome, Phil. Hopefully you haven't been stung by a bee yet. You're in a very different setting today. And that painting behind you I'm just looking at, that looks like a very, very expensive painting. Are we doing better than I thought, Phil, or what's going on with that? No, Gary, but a shout out to Tracy, one of our wonderful, wonderful clients that uh, I've uh, talked to her about this painting for, I don't know, 20 years, Gary, uh, and uh, I'm now the proud owner of it. Um, and I, as I said to Tracy when I, when I took the painting, um, I'm, she's really handing it from one custodian to another custodian. And it's oh. a painting by Jason Benjamin Gary. And uh, I bought this painting because it, uh, it, it's, the, it's the painting that evokes the strongest memories I have of my childhood growing up on a farm in Cootamundra in New South Wales. Just as well that you paid her for it, Phil, because it would have been quite embarrassing if she had it stolen and she's actually seen it on GPTV. That would be quite an expose, but uh, thankfully that's not what happened, Phil. Uh, but here we are with two weeks to go. We've got one more GPTV. And the next one after that, uh, well, if things go the way that we'd like them to, although uh, Dan the man, or as um, uh, Dictator Dan, or as um, I think it's uh, he's referred to um, by Alan Jones as Kim Jong Dan at the moment, Phil. All right, I just, I just want to jump right in there, Gary, because I'm not sure that this show is ready for you to start talking and quoting Alan Jones. So to all of the viewers uh, that are watching this, uh, and keep in mind, Gary, probably 50% of them think that uh, Dan Andrews is doing a good job. So let's just keep our political biases um, and actually our stupidity to ourselves because uh, Alan Jones has no place on GPTV. Yeah, right. Well, then 50% of the audience has become very upset by that. You just alienated the 50% that might love Alan Jones, Phil. So uh, there you go. But having said that, um, the point I'm trying to make, Phil, is Well, that... maybe, maybe just make your point, Gary, in a uh, non-political, bipartisan way with respect for all. Well, we don't know then, for those others, if the Right Honourable Daniel Andrews, uh, MP and Premier, uh, will allow uh, stage four to be finished uh, at the date that he declared it. Phil, we don't know what's going to happen. In the meantime, the real estate market kind of keeps going on in a kind of, uh, it's like, it's kind of asking someone to run a race by holding one of their legs back a little bit. But as we are a little bit restrained, although, Phil, sales still happening, not in volume, but deals, the train keeps going. And it's an express. And Gary, before we jump into real estate and just to, just to kind of put the cap on the, put the lid on the political talk that we've just had, um, I think I'm fascinated because we all know how quickly 10 years goes past. I think in 10 years' time, on the assumption that we come out of stage four lockdown and we're not still in it in 10 years' time, in 10 years' time when we all look back on this, uh, and the world there gets an opportunity to write the, the book on how we handled the COVID pandemic. It'll be really interesting to see who was right, who was wrong, who made better decisions, who made poorer decisions. And I think until a few years parts, um, I don't think it's fair to sit in judgment of really anybody. Well, that's fair enough. And well, we won't, we won't then, Phil. But that doesn't change the fact that we don't know whether in two weeks or not we're going to be at a stage four, Phil. That's the point I'm making. So you've managed to, to create a whole lot of controversy where there isn't any. Uh, but I'm just saying, two weeks, we're either out, we're back on the streets in some kind of possible stage three way, or we're still cooped up in our home with our beautiful art for some, or for me, just hanging out here on the street outside the office. No traffic. You'll notice no traffic at all, Phil. Uh, but Gary, uh, I'd see you. First of spring, first day of spring, first of September is, is a particularly wonderful season for you because uh, the viewers will know that you're one of, uh, one of Australia's premier racing uh, identities and, and certainly a man with a very big stable. Um, and uh, spring is, uh, is, is your time, if you like, Gary. This is the time where, you know, we pretty much don't see you seven days a week as, you, as you're at the track in the morning and the track in the evening and watching, watching your horses that started yesterday, finished today. Uh, uh, small Phil, small uh, fact there that might have gone over your head. Uh, but the point I'm making is, Gary, apparently this year's running of the Melbourne Cup, the 2020 Melbourne Cup, is going to be run without jockeys. 
Uh, <laughs> any jockeys, Philip? Uh, look, uh, it's going to be interesting. Then apparently the prize money's gone down, I think, from $6 million to $4 million or something like that. We won't get the overseas horses here, so it will be a local affair. Uh, but, Phil, you know, I've always said that houses pay better than horses, Philip. It's only one letter, but it makes a big difference. Houses oh. over here, they pay. Horses over here. You've, you've actually never, ever used that joke. So we're releasing some new material on GPTV on the first day of spring. Well done, Gary. There's, um, a, there's a vault full. Yeah. My, my, my point being is that um, if we go from stage four to stage three, stage three is about going back, of course, to observing social distancing. Yeah. And for those people that do watch horse races, you know, as they go around the turn, Gary, and as they head towards the winning post, you find, and you find the formation of horses comes in very tight and very close. Well, that would mean the jockeys, if there are going to be jockeys, will not be socially distant. So what is the VRC bringing in to ensure that we have socially distant jockeys? Well, Phil, as you would be aware or may not be aware, that racing does not stop for anything, you know, not for that. I mean, we're in stage four now. Every industry shut down, but the horses are racing. The jockeys are racing. There was a big shock last week. There was a strapper in Cranbourne that had COVID or tested positive. So that strapper was locked in a stable somewhere, nailed. The door was nailed. The strapper just asked for a bit of food to be put underneath the door, uh, locked away and isolated. But the racing industry has, has gone unaffected the entire time. There's one little glitch with one jockey, Mark Zara, who had a bit of a, bit of a test who was on a plane with somebody that had it, but uh, it just keeps on going. But uh, in terms of horses, Phil, uh, I've, I've left the viewers out of a couple of the tips lately. I've had a second and a midfield runner, so I'll let you know uh, when the winners are coming. Tell me, what's the, what's the number one racing channel on the radio, Gary, or on the television? Uh, well, it's Sky Racing now, and Sky right. Racing... Uh, has so been... this, this sounds this sounds like we're auditioning for Sky Racing. So this, let's get let's get back to basics. This is GPTV. It's a property show. It is Philip exactly right. Sky Racing Two uh, has become a free channel now, Philip, for the first time in many years. Uh, but anyway, we get away from horses. We get back to houses. Uh, there have been a number of sales that happened through the week, Phil, uh, but they're all undisclosed, so we can't really talk about them. But a couple of prestige sales in the Crawford North area, Phil, which is interesting. Well, Gary, shout out to uh, the Krongold Zellman team and also to Leon Gusenfitter, uh, that team. And this is a scoop on GPTV, Gary. Uh, they, have, uh, they have made a sale in excess of $4 million in the heart of the Golden Mile. The price of the property is undisclosed. The house address is undisclosed but the point that i'd like to make by the scoop on gbtv is that uh, you know that everybody's asking well hasn't COVID affected the property market well you know at the very top end of the market there is a statement of intent that says i'm putting my flag on this piece of land because i'm going to own it for the next 20 or 30 years uh, and i'm going to take opportunity where it knocks gary now, Phil, one of the things that uh, I was interviewed uh, this week uh, from Domain about what buyers are we going to see in the market uh, post stage four? So let's call it, say for the purpose of this conversation, post this COVID lockdown or uh, restrictions, what are people going to be buying? And I'll tell you what, Phil, I think people are going to be looking for homes that are larger with larger spaces for people to go to and study areas. I think that people are going to value their study and workspaces a lot more than before to be working at home because people got used to it now. I feel your thoughts. Uh, I love the way that you've asked a question and then answered your own question. So uh, <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for handing over to me. I'm not sure what more I can add since you so beautifully answered the question, but, I, but what I would add is that one thing that we've uh, established right through this lockdown oh. is that um, the inquiries on REA and Domain have spiked. So uh, it's very clear that the consumer, not just our consumers, but it's very clear that the consumer has used lockdown to research real estate. So we know that Australians are obsessed by real estate. That hasn't stopped through in lockdown. We're all assuming, and I think it's a fair assumption to make, that post-lockdown, all of the homework that people have done on REA and Domain and our, our website uh, will translate to busy open for inspections, busy appointments. Uh, and I think that we've also established during lockdown, Gary, now that we've made enough sales, and I think we're both a bit shocked how many sales we did make in lockdown, uh, I think, quite frankly, we're, I reckon we've made 400% more sales than I anticipated. 
Um, so I, I think what that's really proving to us is A, the consumer is interested because they're looking online. B, we've made many more sales than we thought we would. And in all price ranges from as little as $600,000, oh, actually as little as 295000 to well over $4 million. I think post lockdown, the consumer will be back voraciously chasing a, a new home. Uh, that's a very long response to it uh, without giving me the answer to the question I asked you. Uh, the question I'm asking is what will people be looking for post lockdown? In my opinion were homes and, and the word that Domain came up with was they said that the word study has had a six fold increase in terms of people's search. So interesting information for not factual information, not speculative, and we're not boasting now about our sales, talking about what people are looking for. What do you think people will be looking for post lockdown? Well, I, I think I answered the question brilliantly, Gary, because in, in the, essence, the essence to my answer was I think they're going to be looking for everything. But I, I, think, I think there's no question that those that are living in a home that is on the smaller side for them, there's no question we're going to see frenetic buying of people trading up, not necessarily in price terms, but just in space terms. I think that, that uh, most people have come to the conclusion that if they're living in, a, in, a, in some level of confinement, they want to trade up. I think you're going to find a lot of people that are living in, in apartments, for example, will be saying, I want a piece of land where I can have a garden because the balcony hasn't cut it for me. So I think, I think you're going to see a lot of people obviously chasing the study. I think that's a given. And I think that people are very much of the opinion now that whilst they'll be returning to the office, they won't be returning to the office full time in the future. I, th I think you're going to see a lot of people working from home a day, two or three from week. So studies are very important. But I think the garden, whether it be a courtyard garden or whether it just be some increase on the greenery that people have, I think you're going to see people chasing land. Uh, Phil, uh, I've actually been uh, reading something uh, from America. It's not about breeding of northern hemisphere horses, by the way, or bloodstock, but I've been reading about property and uh, a lot of people are moving now out of cities. There's been a big movement of people saying, I've had it in the cities. Firstly, they're endangered in the cities because of all the rioting that's going on. People going now to seaside living, working from home. Is it possible, not because of rioting here, but just because of trends and the way people live in We see more of that. <laughs> Without question, and look, if I was, uh, if I was, I don't know what shires these places are in, but you know, if I was, in, if I was running the marketing department for Geelong or Benalla or Ballarat, I think there's massive opportunities for these good, strong regional towns to, you know, they could double their population because they've got the infrastructure. But I think that a lot of people will now be saying, you know what, if I lived in Ballarat um, and I'm working from home two days instead of, uh, it, 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 I'm working at, at, at home two days and going to the office for three days. I'll put up with the longer commute for the three days, knowing that I've got four days at home. So I, I think that the regional, the strong regional towns are just going to get stronger and stronger. And I think that, you know, the, the state government, the federal government have been preaching decentralisation for so long. Uh, this is the biggest free kick to decentralisation this country's ever seen. And, of course, it's been on the political agenda, Philip, to have a fast train uh, to Geelong, I think it was, um, uh, where it's an expressive fast train. And I know speaking to Geelong agents, and uh, we've got a friend, of course, in Nicholas Lord, uh, who is there in Maxwell Collins, who says to me that Geelong market is very strong. Um, and uh, Alistair Morrison in Ballarat, Ballarat Real Estate also tells me Ballarat market, very strong. So maybe it's there's... It, it's, in, it's interesting, <coughs> excuse me, because you've said that... Um, you know, um, developing the infrastructure in a very fast train. So there's a, the other side of looking at that, of course, is that maybe governments don't need to build the very fast train to Geelong because if, if the average consumer now, uh, instead of going in from Geelong into the city five days a week, is going in for three days a week, the tolerance to whatever the time that the train takes will be, uh, will be higher. So I think uh, I'm really excited by the fact that this, that, that, that this pandemic has changed everything. Uh, and I think if you're one that actually relish, relishes change, which I do, um, I think we are going to go into the most exciting decade that we have ever seen. Well, that's a big prediction there. We're going to quote you on that in future editions, uh, as you're definitely a lot more um, 
willing, accepting and embracing of change than I am, a little bit more of a traditionalist film. But having said that, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna miss the excitement of it because there's plenty well, of excitement. Gary, don't uh, stand but don't don't stand between me and change. Oh no, God forbid I should even consider doing such a thing. There are two other items to talk about in this edition of GPTV. One of those is an article that came out from the REIV talking about uh, landlords, and they're saying landlords are the forgotten people. Now, of course, the, the uh, image of a landlord in some is a wealthy landowner who uh, sits at the top of his, um, you know, top of his mansion, uh, looking down on all of his property holdings. But the reality is, there are people, uh, landlords, that have got one property they saved their entire life, made sacrifices for, uh, mum and dad investors, living off the income. And of course, that really is more so the profile of a typical landlord. And the ROV one in their argument about the government uh, lack of, um, I guess, considering landlords, they talked about the example of an $800,000 property that somebody owns. Maybe it's negatively geared, maybe not. Maybe they're living off that income, of which they get $500 relief in land tax, yet the tenant gets $3,000 in relief of rent uh, and the unfairness. Uh, of that situation that, you know, and, and I guess the, uh, the article was uh, landlords should not be the forgotten people. They do make the economy. They're not people that have got immense wealth most of the time or often. Uh, you got any thoughts or comments around that, Phil? Uh, I do, Gary. Um, I, there's, there's something I'm going to raise here that I'm surprised has never got significant publicity um, and, and maybe... Um, somebody watching this will take this as an argument up front and, and do something with it. But interestingly, everybody loves to talk about rich landlords. And you're 100% correct that the typical Australian landlord is a middle class socioeconomic speaking, middle class Australian. So they're the typical, they're your next door neighbour, if you like. So they're not rich. They're just somebody like you and me that live next door to somebody else. They're just the typical landlord owns one property. Um, and, 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 and the politics like to talk about rich landlords, but one thing that the private landlord market has done for this country is that it has taken away the responsibility from state governments to build social housing. Um, and it's really interesting because I'm surprised and maybe we should do something with this, that the private landlord market really supri supplies the market with social housing and, and, and enables government not having to, to provide it. So uh, there is a massive debate that could be had around that, that not only is the average landlord just your typical Australian, but they're doing more to provide housing and keeping the lid on rental prices than the government does. So I think they've saved the government a huge amount of money, and it's just not talked about, which I don't understand. Uh, it's a good point, Phil. The other good point I've got to make today is, are you wearing a black T-shirt? Is that a T-shirt you're wearing? Is that, is that what GPTV has come to, that you now disrespect our noble profession and the viewers who take their time to watch this? They're probably 20 minutes in now thinking, you know, this is supposed to be a professional show, and you are now in a T-shirt with some sort of crusty, I don't know what jacket that is. What is going on there? With your wardrobe, so so here's the thing, Gary. Um, as I said, don't get in, don't get between me and change. Um, COVID has changed so many things. I'm determined not to just do today what we did yesterday because yesterday was the way we always did things. You're going to see me doing a lot of different things this year, Gary. I'm going to challenge the conventional wisdoms. I'm going to challenge the conventional boundaries. Um, and, you know, you can either come along with me on this journey or you can stay with your with your overgrown eyebrows and be that real estate agent that talks about the time when you used to put buyers in your car and drive them around. Uh, so yeah, Gary, you either get on my bus, which is the bus of change and the bus of, of, of doing things better and differently, or just stay in your crusty, silly old <laughs> pathetic ways. Uh, look at, so let me ask you this. Are we ready for auctions without ties, Philip? Is that oh, Gary? Uh, just watch this space. Watch this space. In fact, uh, here's here's an announcement because I did tell somebody this. Um, as and it's, lead, it's a segue to lead me into my my next uh, train of thought. I've fallen in love with Yellowstone, uh, the series. Uh, oh, I will be doing my first auction, I think, in a pair of blue jeans, brown riding boots, big buckled belt. 
um, a checked shirt and a vest and a cowboy hat. So yeah, stay, stay tuned, the auctions are changing. Uh, which leads me into the segue before I give you an opportunity to even, uh, to even disagree. Um, I've just watched a four-part series that you are going to love uh, because it's a drama that's based in truth called The Salisbury Poisonings. Mm, make, I'll, make, so, I'll make a note. I'll make, a make, note. A, make, make a note of that. Viewers, um, you'll all, or you might not remember, but it'll probably make sense as I talk about it. Uh, you'll remember that the, um, that the great uh, democracy of Russia uh, sent some sent some tourists to the town of Salisbury uh, to assassinate to a, a, a Russian um, a, an ex Russian spy and his daughter. So this is a four part series telling that story, and it is phenomenal, phenomenal uh, drama. Well, I'm watching Mac Mafia. Have you seen that, Philip? Yet? No, I haven't. That's a ripper. If you talk about, I mean, I tell you what, Russians are not getting a great rap at the moment, are they? <laughs> Poisoning and the Russian mafia, and of course we have a lot of uh, Russian clients who we love, and we're not messing with you. By the way, we respect. We're not messing with you at all. Uh, full respect. Full respect. Full respect, full respect from uh, G, the, the Pierre family, uh, and, and of course the uh, Kingston family, and uh, those associated with us. But a very interesting show, the mafia. You have to watch that one, Phil. Uh, but um, I just want to go back a step because there are there are landlord, uh, not that vendors, who have planned on listing with us. They just heard about what you're going to wear to their auction. And uh, they might be the best thing that's ever happened for our competitors because they might be out the door. So for those uh, prospective vendors, don't worry. You can have Philip dress what you'd like them to dress. I'm happy to do your auction in a more traditional manner. Um, so don't worry about that. Just want to get, uh, oh, in, keep, in keeping with your conservatism, you have raised an interesting point. Um, I will make it uh, optional for any vendor that I'm auctioning for. Um, if, they, if they want me to just wear the traditional suit and tie, all they've got to do is ask. If they don't ask, I'll take it that they're giving me carte blanche to do whichever I will. Well, I'm not quite sure the Fuller Street vendor gave permission for you to auction uh, their beautiful home in your underpants. I don't know whether that was signed off on. I haven't seen the small print, but I'll be looking out for it. Phil, before we go... You, know, just to... you can imagine just post-lockdown, this is going to be the first legal case against... Us yeah, yeah, post lockdown, yeah. uh, and it'll and it'll be but it'll be based on a class action around that for sure. Yeah, there'll be professional standards. People will be uh, traumatized. They'll have all sorts of loss of enjoyment of life, and uh, there'll be people who are suffering and all sorts children, of children that were watching that will never be the same. Exactly right. Ruined <laughs> lives, uh, extending through to families. I can just see it. Phil, we're going to finish off with something a bit novel and different. We've got the great art competition, uh, or the great drawing competition, painting drawing. Let's call it drawing competition. The great drawing competition commences now, Philip. We've got two weeks for you to get your drawings in. We're going to have a, a $200 voucher at Los Chicos, Philip, uh, for, the, for the winner. Uh, we're going to support our local Los Chicos. Uh, fantastic restaurant, that is. Cafe, I should say, in, um, in uh, of course, Balaclava Road. And second... Uh, Carlisle Ca 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 Street, actually, Gary. Carlisle Street, that end, of course. Philip just wanted to see you were paying attention. And $100 uh, for the runner-up. Uh, voucher as Los Chicos. But the best drawing, and the drawing, Philip, has to be what you are going to be wanting to do after COVID. So some sort of a after lockdown stage four. So let's presume... So give, give us some examples, Gary. Well, you might want to go, you know, to Luna Park. You might want to go for a, you know, a swim, a swim in the beach, which you're not allowed to do at the moment. Uh, you might want to go and have a hug with a few friends wearing masks. I don't know if that's appropriate, but some... Post-COVID happy experience, we want a drawing of that, Philip. A post-COVID or post-stage four, you can have either of the ones you could choose. Let's call it post-COVID. A post-COVID experience of happiness, of joy, of positivity uh, with you or other people in it, Philip, or a combination of the two. That's what we want to see drawings of. We're going to show them two weeks. We'll remind you next week. And, of course, the great drawing competition. Let it continue. Let it begin. Uh. What a, what a lovely idea, Gary. And I think that this has got real legs. We'll, we'll build a marketing story around this moving forward. Yes. Uh, I will take it. I will just shout out to, uh, to you, Gary, who uh, invented this drawing competition about 19 minutes ago. Uh, and I said, uh, well, give it a go. I think it's a dumb idea, but let's see what happens. So there's a challenge, viewers. Uh, this could become an annual event. Let's get behind Gary and his drawing competition. Uh, you might like to draw a photo of a crusty old man with eyebrows with with birds nesting in it. Uh, there's an idea for you. <laughs> there's an idea for you. Anyway, Gary, uh, looking forward to lockdown finishing. Um, 
so proud of the team uh, as to what they've achieved through this lockdown period. Uh, we never thought we'd make the number of sales that we did. So it just goes to show the world is changing and our team are leading change from the front. It could be an image of an auction too, Philip. We haven't seen too many of those. A, 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 an auction scene, perhaps. You, I know your, your mother painted a beautiful painting years ago uh, and there was an auction scene amongst many other images, which we show that on GPTV because it's a wonderful... You should. Uh, but let's go to the great drawing competition, Philip. And uh, kids can join in, adults can join in. It's for everybody, uh, a post-COVID uh, image. And in, and in traditional fashion, I'm going to enter the competition. Uh, I'm going to get my mother to paint it, of course, and I'll sign it, and that's uh, in keeping with tradition. Yeah, well, let's do that. I think that's a very good idea, Phil. Uh, let's, get, let's move on on that note, Phil, to wrap up this edition, this spring edition. We are here for spring on GPTV. We're two weeks away from uh, the stage four lockdown, hopefully changing, where we'll be out and about in some sort of a limited way, no doubt. Uh, but uh, for all of our viewers, we hope you, we thank you for watching the show. We hope you stay well, stay healthy, you and your families. And we'll see you next week on GPTV. I'm Gary. And I'm going to close with this, Gary. Here's my prediction for June 2021. Based on the fact that it's the first of spring today, massive numbers of babies are going to be born in June 2021. Wow. Stay tuned. We'll see what that will, we'll wind back to this in June and see whether that's come true. Thanks for, thanks for being on the show, Phil. Thanks for watching viewers. See you next time. Bye. All. Viewers. Lovely to chat. See you later. Bye.